Good evening. My name is Bruce Montgomery, and thank you for joining me on this edition of Technology Access Television. Well, you know, this year is flying. Do you believe it? It's almost March. In fact, it is March. I mean, come on. This year is just flying by. And for those of you that had a New Year's resolution that your business was going to be in a better shape this year than it was last year, I hope you're doing more than crossing your fingers. You know, you need to have a plan. You probably need to have a coach. You probably need to have all of the above, somebody helping you stay on task, stay on track, and actually accomplish the goals that you set out. Yes, the economy may be a little better, but really better than the economy is having a good plan and working that plan and executing at a high level. And my guest today is going to talk about some of the ins and outs of making your plan work, working your plan. And there's an organization that's been helping entrepreneurs longer than any other and really doesn't charge anything for their service. Now, that's part of the story, but we're going to hear the whole story from Rhonda Henderson. R my guest today, Rhonda, how you doing? Hi, Bruce. How you doing? My pleasure for you being here. Thank and you I'm so much for having me. So glad for you to sl slow down. I know you got about 15 hats <laughs> that you wear from uh, business coach to score counselor to uh, business school instructor. Uh, you probably don't sleep too much, do you? I, I try to. I make sure <laughs> okay. I get eight hours. <laughs> well, then that's phenomenal. We definitely need to talk to you because we need to know how you fit all that in and still get eight hours worth of sleep. Well, well it comes down to effective time management. Effective? I knew she was going to say that. See, she's, <laughs> you know, I knew it was going to be one of those tricks of the trade, but mm -hmm. so glad that you could be here. And Thank you yeah. are, in fact, a uh, SCORE counselor. How long have you been doing SCORE counseling? Well, I've been working with SCORE since 2010, uh, okay. February to be exact, 2010. All right, and for those that don't maybe know about SCORE, who is SCORE? Well, SCORE is a not-for-profit organization that's a partner, that has a partnership with the SVA. Okay. Um, so we're here, we have uh, mentors all over the city, and essentially, like you said, we help small businesses get to the next level, whether it's helping them to start, grow, or for sustainability. Now, when the people hear about SCORE, there. They, they, you know, that acronym uh, usually talks about people that are retired. I, e either you won the lottery or <laughs> went public or something, but what, what attracted you to be involved with the SCORE? I mean, you're not retired from anything. You're doing everything. How right. did you get connected to SCORE? Well, no, I'm not retired. I <laughs> wish. <laughs> but um, I decided to, to start with SCORE because, um, as you had mentioned, I am a business professor. So what I started noticing was there was a disconnect between the student that stated that they wanted to go into business and the person that actually goes into business. So those are my clients. And usually, once they come to me for consulting services, their business is in a disarray. And there were some steps that they could have taken in the middle while they were trying to formulate. So I joined SCORE to catch those people that were still at the formulation startup stage and to help them before they made some of the mistakes that in business people make. Well, that's a phenomenal uh, commitment to something that's very, very important because, uh, you know, when people think about volunteering and giving back, oftentimes they don't think about giving back in roles that create jobs and support businesses. Right. Uh, here, you know, people say, well, you know, you could be charging right. for all that advice. How do you, uh, w what was your mentality of saying, okay, uh, yeah, I'm still out here consulting and coaching and doing mm -hmm. all these things, but I can give a little of my time as well. What caused you to, 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 to move into that realm of volunteering your professional expertise in the area of SCORE? Well, at the end of the day, small businesses fuel the economy. So if I help other businesses to grow, then essentially my business will grow as well. Um, I accept referral, referrals from people. Um, I accept all types of different things. So of course, that's really what it comes down okay. to. But uh, not so much of that, I'm not gonna say that. But it essentially comes down to helping other businesses. If I can help a business in my community reach the next level, then essentially they can then turn around and possibly help someone come my way. So it's about the network at the end of the day. And a lot of times when businesses are in the startup stage, they don't have a lot of money to make mistakes. So SCORE is a great organization because it does help people pro bono uh, get to where they want to go before they um, really start working towards their craft of their business. Well, that, that is a great testament to the law of giving and receiving. Yes. 
And sometimes you have to give first. Exactly. And when you give, you know, there's this popular term of pay it forward and really just trying to make a difference. But you're absolutely correct. Uh, a rising tide, a, a good economy, strong, small businesses means that there's more work out here for everybody. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people uh, think that you could put something in a closed hand, and of course you can't. you got to open your hand right. in order to give a handshake, in order to receive a handshake. Exactly. And SCORE is, again, a phenomenal institution. I, I, I have to admit, I didn't really know, I had heard of it and mm -hmm. kind of thought of it. And when I maybe had a picture in my mind, I'm thinking some, you know, some gray haired guy somewhere talking about how business used to be back in the turn of the mm -hmm. century or something. And actually nothing could be further from the truth right. as I've gone to investigate. In fact, I was at a workshop that you did uh, a, a couple of workshops and you're talking about social media. You're talking about YouTube. You're talking about state of the art marketing strategies. Right. I mean, score is by no means um, old hat. It's uh, not. score is right on the cutting edge offering work. Talk about some of the workshops and what are those workshops about? Well, basically we want to make sure that we have information for the entrepreneur today. Um, a lot of people do think SCORE is outdated because historically it has been a lot of um, older gentlemen, we'll okay. say, <laughs> executives. But um, it's not about that. It's about being fresh and vibrant and actually offering things that people can use now. The entrepreneur today is changing and we need to make sure that we stay up to date so that we can further help those people become successful in their business. And I think just like just like you, many people that are involved with SCORE mentoring and coaching and counseling uh, still have a lot of things going on in the business world. So exactly. these aren't people that have just hung up their spurs mm -hmm. and aren't doing anything. Mm -hmm. These are people that are on boards. These are people that are investors. These are the people that have contacts. And so they're making their contacts and their resources available to young entrepreneurs. So what would you t say to people out there that are thinking about business or, or trying to restructure their business or really move their business into a level of growth? What should they come to score for? Well, they should come to SCORE for information first. Don't jump in and not do your research. A lot of people just say, wake up one day and say, I want to start a business, but don't fully research what they're looking to do. So before you even start the business, you want to say, hey, is this the best thing for me to do? Is it going to give me what the goal I'm looking for in the future from owning a business. Is it something I can dedicate myself to? And is it my passion? A SCORE counselor can help you find that information out. And then after that, you need to go through a certain amount of um, steps to formulate your business correctly. A lot of people start businesses and don't take the necessary steps needed to actually formulate the business correctly. You want to make sure you have the proper licensing, the proper structure, the proper foundation in place. And again, SCORE counselors can help with that information. Well, I think SCORE is a phenomenal resource. Of course, for those of you that don't know, uh, meeting with mentors, meeting with coaches at SCORE is free. There is no charge. Just contact SCORE Chicago, uh, register to uh, g connect with one of the phenomenal uh, coaches like Rhonda, and you can sit down and talk one-on-one, -on -one, an hour at a time, mm -hmm. and I think you can come back as often as you need to to advance your business. Is that correct? Yes, that's absolutely cor correct. We set up a relationship. It's a mentoring relationship. And I work with uh, individuals, and I'll work with you as long as, as it takes for you to gain success in your business. Well, you heard it right here. If you haven't taken advantage of SCORE Chicago, you should. We're going to take a break. and we come back, we're going to talk with Rhonda some more about some of the real strategic planning issues that she uses in her coaching activities to move businesses from wannabes to, to they got it together. We'll be right back.
Thanks for sticking with me. My name is Bruce Montgomery, and we're here at Technology Access Television. Today, we're talking about uh, how do you go about using and benefiting from business coaching. We're talking about an organization that probably has devoted more hours to successfully coaching businesses to grow to the next level than any organization that I can think of, and that is SCORE. SCORE, that's right. The, uh, the organization has been around forever. Uh, most people think it's part and parcel of the Small Business Administration, but really SCORE is its own organization. And it's not your father or mother's SCORE anymore. Uh, there are all kinds of wonderful things happening at this organization. This organization is doing uh, online coaching, is doing Skype coaching, is doing e-learning, is doing webinars, is doing mobile coaching. All of these kinds of things are happening, and yes, it's amazing. And yes, it, there are some phenomenal coaches that are right here in Chicago, and one of them is taking some time to be with me today and give us some of the insights on what it really takes to be uh, very successful at using a coach and benefiting from a coach to grow and prosper prosper in establishing your own business. Uh, my guest today is Rhonda Henderson. Rhonda, thank you for coming back. Thank you. And now you've been a, did, did you actually start uh, business coaching uh, a while back or before you even got involved with SCORE? Uh, I started before I got involved with SCORE, yes. Okay, and a lot of people, you know, Coaching is something that kind of came out of nowhere, and I don't know if it was Anthony Robbins or whoever, but, <laughs> you know, people thought about well, being motivated and being focused and being on task and mm -hmm. all of this. But then coaching has taken a lot of different turns and some good, some bad. What, what do you think about the whole role of coaching, and why, are, why is coaching so valuable to businesses? Well, it helps to give direction. Oftentimes, a lot of business owners can't see beyond what they're doing, so it becomes a little box for them and they wonder why they can't grow or they can't reach the different levels that they desire to reach because they don't, again, like I said, look beyond that box. So coaches and consultants help small business owners do just that. They give them guidance. They let them know what they're doing wrong. They talk them off the cliff, all of that stuff. <laughs> now, you know, so many of us uh, as entrepreneurs, uh, you wouldn't be an entrepreneur if you didn't think you could take care of business. You didn't, if, you, if you didn't really wake up in the morning or were hungry to get out there and make something happen. And sometimes people say, well, what good is talking to somebody going to mm -hmm. do? I mean, I need to, I need to be uh, visiting my customer. I need to be negotiating a contract. How is talking to a coach going to move me forward in what I'm trying to do? Is it all just talk, or can it end up in actionable steps that can really move people beyond some of those impediments that they have? Right. Well, it's action. Everything is built on action. Oftentimes, small business owners are really good at their craft, but they spend no time on the foundation. The foundation is the accounting, bookkeeping, marketing, and management, <laughs> and actually having something in place for all of those things. When you don't do it, you may be really successful at selling cakes or doing whatever it is you're doing, grass service or whatever service it is, but your foundation isn't together. So eventually, those mistakes that you're making in that area is going to catch up with you. So usually what I do is go and meet with the person and actually find out where the, those foundation things are and then set a course of action necessary to correct those things so that now the company can reach a certain level of growth in, in their goals. Now, I've, I've been doing this show for a number of years, and of course, the name of this show is Technology Access Television. Mm -hmm. And I try to weave in, you know, some awareness of how, you know, sometimes when people think of technology, they automatically think of computers. Sometimes they think about software. But technology is really know-how mm -hmm. and applying know-how to, to doing something better, maybe more productively, maybe at a way that can leverage uh, your core competencies. So how is, how is technology changing the activity of small business coaching? It, in so many ways. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I love Skype because right. I can meet with a lot of people at home okay. and actually be there for um, various hours of the day that wouldn't necessarily be... Um, professional, I guess, for others, but making myself available to people that need to talk at 10 o'clock at night, maybe. Mm. They have a presentation in the morning that they need to put together, or they having issues with their business plan that they need to present to the bank in the morning. Just being able to have that service where it's 
Skype, email, all those things like that, and having that structure. Um, a lot of times people reference the internet for, um, to find out about the business. So I give you my card, you look at it, and then immediately what do you do when you go home? You go Google. to the website and yeah, Google and see exactly. what that person is all about. Exactly. So a lot of business owners need to understand what um, role this has in growing their business and getting customers and utilizing those tools to make their business better. Now, a, a lot of times uh, businesses recognize the need for advice and counsel. Uh, many times they don't necessarily have a board of advisors mm -hmm. or uh, somebody they could talk to. And so all businesses do need to be able to talk to somebody yes. uh, that will listen to them, mm -hmm. not just because they have to, but because they really can give constructive feedback. But, again, many small businesses are saying, I I'm, I'm spooked by a coach because, you know, how much does it cost? And, and, and you know, it's so funny because when we look at uh, small businesses in their use of professional services, mm -hmm. everybody knows you should have a lawyer, but they don't talk to them. Right. Everybody knows they should have an accountant, but they're scared to death to talk to their accountant. Right. Why? Because they think every time they talk to him, the guy's going to generate a bill, right. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, God, you know, I'd rather try to figure it out myself. And, of course, they don't figure it out, mm -hmm. so they have problems. Right. The real difference is can, can people have people that they can talk to, that they can have confidence in, but also that they can afford to have a dialogue with? Exactly. Uh, and I know you, a lot of people say, well, you know, good, good lawyering and good coaching you know, pays for itself. Mm -hmm. But but how do you work it out so that people aren't scared uh, to talk to you <laughs> that every time the clock is running and they can kind of afford to have that kind of relationship and as they grow, you, that, that benefit can grow along with them? Well, again, as you just said, it's a relationship. And I'm all about fostering and building effective business relationships. So if I'm working with a client and I see that they're genuinely focused on growing their business and taking the steps that I suggest to them, then of course everything is up to be negotiated, okay. we'll say. <laughs> right. All right. But um, as you said, if you're building a relationship with someone and we're all going to prosper in the end, then you can take certain steps to make sure that they reach their goal and have that as part of your goal as well. Now, do you focus your uh, coaching and uh, counseling work on certain industries uh, or, or do you have clients across the board in a lot of different areas? Uh, no, I do not focus on industry because at the end of the day, the foundation is the same regardless of what type of business it is. You have to have effective accounting, bookkeeping practices, some sort of management principles in place, uh, procedures, and you have to have marketing strategies. Now, how including do including social media? Okay. <laughs> now, again, because you know you've got an MBA and, and and you went to a prestigious school and you learned a lot of things. But how would you say now that you're out here in the real doggy uh, dog business world that you have uh, said, well, you know, everything wasn't like what they said it was going to be in accounting 101. Right. And here's what the real world of accounting is all about. Mm -hmm. How have you uh, uh, changed or modified or stayed abreast of? the real requirements out here in the real world? Trial and error. Okay. <laughs> School of hard knocks. Exactly. <laughs> All right. But um, there is some things that are tied together, but of course everything is not textbook. And it's just realizing that everything is not textbook. Mm -hmm. So when you start to approach things and you look at what's going on in the economy and the different directions of everything um, as far as big business and small businesses, you start to implement what makes sense. Now, you know, some people say that times like these are absolutely the best times to be talking about going into business, to expanding business, to grow business, to do business. Mm -hmm. It, it is tough. It's, it's no it's no walk in the park. Mm -hmm. But yet these are times when markets are in flux and people can make moves mm -hmm. to get to gain entree and, and to, to bring something new to the table. Are you seeing in the clients that you're working with some indications that they're making good progress? And yes. this is exactly the time that they ought to be expanding and growing their franchise. Yes, it is. It is. Um, there's a lot of great initiatives out here for small businesses, a lot of programs available. Take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Now is the time. As long as you do your research <laughs> and set a plan of action, everything starts with a plan, and that's where you have to start. 
Well, I'm so delighted that you have uh, taken uh, the approach uh, as um, a, a very young person to to give something back and to be part of a growing phenomenon. You know, uh, f connecting, networking, volunteering, uh, coaching, mentoring, all of these are something that really have gone on forever. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we didn't know about it because right. depending on if we worked for a big company or, or where we went to school, maybe we weren't familiar with some of the nuances which, which really make people successful. But mm -hmm. a, a good friend of mine is a, a professor at the Kellogg School, a guy by the name of Stephen Rogers, mm -hmm. and he likes to tell a story of uh, the, uh, the CEO and owner of uh, um, uh, S.C. Johnson up in Racine, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And this guy has a family business, uh, you know, multi-million dollars, uh, been around for a long time, but yet he's always seeking out coaches and counselors that he pays big money mm -hmm. to keep him abreast of all these new things. And Stephen said, how do, you, how do you know so much about all these different subjects? He said, how do you think I know? I get good coaches right. and they teach me. Mm -hmm. And he said, man, if a CEO who's, you know, taken over a family business that's worth billions of dollars can seek out coaches and benefit from coaches. And what about little guys? They ought to be able to do the same thing. So it's, it's wonderful that, that you're, you put yourself in a position both to offer free counseling and coaching mm -hmm. through SCORE, and I'm sure people are going to look you up and take advantage of that, <laughs> but also you're out there as a paid coach. And yes, you're out I there am. coaching and mentoring and handling people one-on-one, -on -one, and yes. I guess you're having a world of fun. Yes, I am. I am. I enjoy small <laughs> business owners. I love the energy. And I wish everyone success at what they're doing. It's just, like I said, find the right people and put them around you and use the knowledge that they have. It's very important, especially in this economy. So. Well, Chicago, you know, is known for being a center of business. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the major first in so many industries have happened in Chicago. And it can happen again. But, you know, you don't have to, like some of us, learn from the School of Hard Knocks all of our lessons. You can take some shortcuts. And, the, and one of the first rules of wisdom is if you don't know, ask. Ask, ask yes. somebody who's maybe been there before, maybe done that, maybe had some trials and tribulations. You know, one of the benefits of having a good coach, again, is taking some shortcuts and saying, what's the fast way to get to where I'm trying to get to? Mm -hmm. Profitability, success, sustainability, uh, those are the kinds of things that are hallmark of good business, not just because you got bumps and bruises and you say, yeah, you know, I've been through the wars, you know, I earned my lumps. <laughs> but hey, you don't have to earn them. You don't get a coach. Right. <laughs> Miss exactly. some of those lumps. So I want to thank you for being a part of Technology Access Television. I want thank to thank you. my guest today, Rhonda Henderson, for being thank on. You so much. Uh, she's at Score Chicago. She's available to do some coaching. She's mm -hmm. doing some classes. Uh, go to their website. They've got a lot of good information. Hey, I really appreciate you coming to this show to get good information about business and entrepreneurship. We're going to keep bringing you the best that we can find. If you got any questions at all, give us a call. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. We're on all that good stuff. Hey, we're right here on Channel 21 on Technology Access Television. Thank you for joining us.